Welcome everyone, this is our Wednesday Wisdom where we go over tips, tricks, and information on band instrument repair. Today we're going to go over the alternatives that you can use for regulating keys on saxophones and other woodwinds instead of traditional materials like cork. Before we get into that, we got a couple of bits of news for you. We do have a hashtag for today. Make sure you take the hashtag TechCork, put that in the comments below. That's going to give you an opportunity to receive 15% off any of the courses that we have coming up in 2020, 2020, 2020, 2023. Holy mouthful there. We have one tomorrow. It's a virtual course on soldering. And we also have another virtual course on February 15th on saxophone key fitting. We talked a little bit about that last week, as well as an in-person course on the 20th. Uh, for basic materials and other basic saxophone techniques that we're going to go over a little bit today, as well as another uh, virtual day course on saxophone modifications and a full advanced course on March 6th. So a lot of stuff coming up. We also went to rent. We also went to, sorry, Arlington, Texas this past weekend, as well as Denton, Texas to talk about the Neo pads. We had a great time talking to the students at the Center for Visual Arts uh, with our good friend, Center for Visual and Performing Arts with our good friend Joe Stroll. And we are going to be in Mission Viejo, California on January 28th. So if you are on the West Coast, make sure that you get up with us and uh, actually don't get up with us. Don't get, don't talk to us. Go to Napper. We don't want to hear from you. Go to Napper.org and sign up for that regional clinic. Ryan and and or Kurt is going to be out there talking about the Neopads. We had a great reception. Um, we did. We did. We, uh, we, Padded a horn in a no, we didn't. We actually had the people install a neopad, we collected all the keys, and then we had somebody and put them back on the instrument. And at the end, it played. So That's we went amazing. from a saxophone with no pads in it whatsoever to a playing saxophone within the span of well, it took less than an hour and a half. That's crazy. So, and that was all because of neopads. Yeah, very well recepted. Great group of techs, great group of students at Joel Stroll School, fantastic facilities. Oh my goodness. Oh, uh, I want to go back to Texas. Wow. Yeah, and we didn't even have any Tex-Mex when we were down oh. there. I know, it's a shame. Well, that's it's a, a shame. shame. At least if we did, I don't remember if we did. So. <laughs> well, it sounds like you had a good time, Ryan. I think I did. I was told I had a great time. And make sure that so. you see us in Mission Viejo if you are on the West Coast. We're also going to be back on the East Coast on February 4th in Covington, Georgia. So hope to see yeah. you then. Covington, Georgia is a two-night show on the Neopad World mm-hmm. Tour, Saturday and part of Sunday. So... Again, like Rich said, you don't have to be a member to sign up. So sign up. What are you waiting for? That's right. Go to napper.org. and Not right now. Wait for this thing to be over and then do it. (laughs) Napper.org and their events section will be able to get you registered for those clinics. Okay, so Ryan, we're going to go over traditional materials first. We'll talk a little bit about those and then we'll give uh, our audience a chance to see some of the synthetic and all their alternatives to traditional materials that we use in the Saks Pro Shop. That's right. Let's get right into it. Let's talk about some of the materials that you use and you used to use. Yeah. Uh, the first one being natural cork. Yes. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> what I have right now. What is this? Uh, yes. So a traditional method or a traditional material used on saxophones for, you know, regulating and silencing and quieting and all that is natural cork. Uh, And it comes in a few different sizes. I want to say five or six different common sizes that we use. Uh, And you can see this one here being 1 16th, an extremely common size Mm -hmm. used for neck corks, tenon corks, and all the other whatnot. Um, It has some good things and some bad things about it. The good things, it's very plentiful. Um, It's very easy to work with. It's easy to cut. It's easy to sand. The downsides is it doesn't hold its shape or thickness as well as some other materials we're going to be talking about. To give you an idea of that, um, let me just take a corner here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the thickness of this. And this is coming to uh, 0.063, which is right about 1 16th. uh, 0.625 is actually 16th. But if I take a pair of pliers and I just very lightly squeeze, squeeze, that's it. Mush it. It It was just a slight mush. Okay, uh, and then I go back and I measure that again. It's coming out to 0.052. That's a pretty big difference. Okay, so that is a big difference. You can think that if you had using this material to time two pads to close at the same time and you get a little bit of mush, now one of them's not going to close. Mm. Okay, so it's not going to come down all the way because you got that little bit of a difference in thickness. Um, so that is the downside of using natural cork for especially regulating materials. Right. Okay. Regulating as far as the timing. 
And we'll talk about you know the what goes on top of the key foot versus what goes on underneath and what it what it's used for. Uh, but that's one example of natural material. Now, okay. what 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 else do you have to show us for natural stuff? Yes, natural stuff. So the next thing we have is natural felt. And you can see this is a just a round disc of natural felt, um, typically used under the A pearl of most saxophones. This guy right here, usually used to time this A to the bis. And you can see, um, again, natural material can wear out. It tends to get hard over time. It tends to soak up whatever stuff is out there. Uh, and then it does tend to get a little bit hard uh, after a while. So okay. those are the two most common natural materials um, that you can use on saxophones that have traditionally been used on saxophones. Here in the pro shop, we don't use any natural materials for key materials. Okay. With one small exception, we'll go on at the very end. Okay. So I'll say that. Well, Boom. I appreciate you for saying that. That's right. You're welcome. So <laughs> are we going to talk about? Yeah, let's go over, uh, since, since, uh, since we're talking about natural cork first, let's talk about our cork alternative. Yes. Cork alternative. So what we use in the sax pro shop instead of natural cork, is the stuff right here tech cork which is hashtag tech cork write it down there it is right there put it in the comments like share and subscribe tell your friends post it on your facebook wall so facebook wall. Yeah, <laughs> put it on your myspace so um so this is tech cork okay and you can see and those, for those of you who don't know music medic was one of the first companies in the band instrument repair industry to bring tech cork onto the market it is cork mixed with rubber uh it's a higher grade than what you might get if you bought like uh cork um uh, what do they call that uh, uh, cork board like cork a bulletin board, board. Bork, bulletin yes. board uh this is more a uh, tolerance material yes. and so it's a lot more consistent in terms of thickness Absolutely. And I'll let so, Ryan talk about the rest. Yeah. So hand it over. Send it over to Ryan. Um, the nice thing about Tech Cork is it is, like like what Rich said, it is very tolerant. So it's going to be nice and even all the way through. And it comes in a huge variety of different sizes. They are measured in millimeters. Uh, so we have 0.3 millimeters, 0.4 millimeters, 0.5 millimeters. You guessed it, 0.6 there's 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, you oh get to 1.0. And then when you get to 1.0 or one millimeter, it jumps up to 1.5 millimeters, 1.8 millimeters, 2.0, and then finally 2.5, as you can see, is the thickest. Uh, and this stuff is very resilient. It is still somewhat easy to work with. You can still cut it somewhat easily. Um, it still will sand. It's a little bit tougher than natural cork, but Let's say you, you, you put in something that's a little bit bigger with natural cork and you got to sand it down. Uh, well, you can do the same thing with, with tech cork. If I put a 0.8 in and it's too big, well, let me try going down to 0.6. Okay, so you have the ability to kind of change without having to do the little sanding arts and crafts project that we're all used to kind of doing. Uh, but it is extremely resilient. It is uh, resistant to compression, which makes it a great material for regulating timing two keys together okay what i'm going to use most of the time for those adjustments those timing adjustments is the thinnest which is 0.3 okay um, so if i need to time two keys to go down together what i'm going to use is 0.3 and to show you exactly where that happens is right here in the back okay so you can see when i press my f key in the front my f sharp key goes down with it what times that together is a piece of material on top of this foot underneath this back bar Okay, so in this case, if I were using a thick piece of cork like this, next thing you know, it's compressed. Now these two keys aren't timed together. Okay, so here I would use the thinnest possible, which is my 0.3. Everything would be good to go. Everything stays in adjustment. Okay, so right. that is what we use for regulating or timing materials together. We can also use it underneath of, of key feet as well to adjust key heights and also to alleviate some bounce, which we can talk about when we talk about some of our softer materials. Now, Ryan, before we get on to those, what is the most, I see you have a lot, there's only about six thicknesses of natural cork, but there's a variety of tech cork thicknesses. What are the most common thicknesses that you use of tech cork in the Saks Pro Shop? Most common sizes is 0.3, and that would be for my regulation or my timing, okay? The another common size is like a 0.6, 
okay? Mm. And that might be underneath of a key foot on a top stack of an alto, okay? I've also used, as a very common size, 1.0, mm. okay? And again, you can sand these, but again, having the variety of different thicknesses, you don't really need to sand all that much to get whatever thickness you need. Uh, but those are the three most common sizes that I will use. I will also use a lot of times the the thickest, which is the 2.5, and you can see some holes punched out of it. Uh, and I will usually use those under key feet that are round, like Selmer's. Okay, so, uh, you know, natural cork is good for uh, under key feet. It's also good as a silencing material. Yeah. What are some alternatives to silencing materials that we yeah. that we use? That we use, we have a couple of them. Uh, the most common being ultra suede. You can see the three different colors here. Uh, there are two different thicknesses. Uh, these right here are about, what'd you say, point point six one millimeters. Point six one. Ooh, yes, this sir. This guy going down to the point oh one millimeter. So with these are both 0 0.61 millimeters in thickness, uh, and they are really, really good for silencing keys if you have a very noisy key. And I'm going to show you here on this one right here, a very, very noisy key. Mm. Um, and then we also have the black, which is 0 .85. 0 .85. 85. This guy, again, going down to the 0.05. Try to be accurate. That's right. Uh, and you can see it's a little bit thicker, okay, which does provide a little bit more of absorbency. Okay, as far as the bounce and the noise. Uh, give you an idea of applications. I, a lot of times, will use the white and the gray on uh, maybe a top stack of a alto. Uh, it could be used on the entire alto. Um, I'll use it on the top stack of a tenor. Um, but when I get to the bottom stack of a tenor, I will use the black because a lot of times those keys being a little bit heavier do need a little bit more of uh, cushioning. Now, what okay. about baritone? Baritone, I will most likely go with all black. Okay. okay. Very rarely will I go with, with, uh, with gray on those, although it still will work. But a lot of times those keys are very big. They have a lot of spring tension and they're going to be very, very noisy. Speaking of noisy, mm. let me show you what it looks like. So again, here's an example right here. I have on the bodies a little disc of natural felt. And underneath that keyboard, I have natural cork. And you can hear, let me bring this up to my mic, what this sounds like. Okay. Sounds like somebody knocking at your door with brass knuckles on. Yes. Okay. It is very noisy. Okay. And there is some bounce there as well. So you can hear a difference if I were just to put this little piece of black ultra suede in between those two parts. First off, no bounce, but... Much quieter. Much, much quieter. Much quieter. And you can see that's just a matter of adding that little bit of black ultra suede. Now, some of you watching may be like, well, Ryan, you just put that in there. Now you've changed the, the key height. You will have to then go in and adjust it. So yes, trust me, I know. Um, you have to think about your materials, putting those on that will quiet things, get things in proper regulation. And then you can worry about things like your key heights and timing. Uh, and if you want to learn more about that, February 20th through 23rd, sign up for our basics course or in March, it's also happening for our advanced course. So you'll learn about all of these different types of materials. Very cool. Okay. Ryan, let's talk about the other synthetic yeah. materials that we have to help with key bounce, because I know that's a big problem on it larger is. instruments like baritone and even tenor sax. Tenor sax, yes. There are, there are cases where you just get a really bouncy key. Um, we have two kind of, uh, I'm going to say extreme measures. If I can't take care of it with my ultra suede, I will usually go to one of these guys. We have this, which is our black magic foam, which is a very thin foam. And you can see it's a little stretchy. Okay. But it is great. It is fantastic for especially bouncy keys. Mm -hmm. Getting rid of that bounce, like I said, low D, another one that has quite a bit of bounce on it would be a lot of times a low C. You know, baritone, tenor, uh, even an alto can have a very bouncy low C. And you would use this like anything else. Now, the, the downside of this is you can't really sand it. You can't really sand the, the ultra suede. That's okay. okay. But it is very easy to glue and you can see to cut as well. Okay. So black magic foam is usually my first go-to. It's a little bit thinner. My next is this stuff right here. Sorbethane. Sorbethane. Okay. And this does have a plastic, you know, coating on it. You, you take this off, you wipe it down. And this is, you can see, even Ooh. more rubberier. Rubber it's the rubberierist. Rubberierist. It's the rubberierist. It. Hashtag <laughs> rubberierist. Actually sorry, tech cork. Hashtag tech cork. Like, share, and subscribe. Um but you can see this has a little bit more stretch to it, uh, and it is very good at taking off uh, or getting rid of any bounce or any key noise. Um, I, I've used this quite a bit for bell keys, very noisy bell keys, very bouncy mm. bell keys, and any key that has 
a lot of bounce to it that you want to get rid of. Okay. Right? Or so, a lower stack on larger instruments. Absolutely. Yep. Very good. Yep. Okay. So Ryan, those are uh, the different materials that we have. I do have a question for you in terms of uh, adhesives. What type of adhesive do you recommend for these synthetic materials? That is a great question. Thank you, Rich. Mm -hmm. I will use this stuff right here, which is just contact cement. Okay. The way contact cement works is you apply a thin layer to, to whatever part you're going to be applying it to. You apply a thin layer to whatever material. You let them dry, and when they're dry, you stick them together, and they bond instantly. Okay, uh, That is my preferred adhesive to use. Now, there are cases where uh, somebody might use something like super glue, okay? uh, and depending on the application, that could be perfectly fine. Okay? I will give you a tip, though. When you're dealing, when you're um, gluing the ultra suede on, it tends to be a kind of like felt where it, it's a little bit absorbent. Okay? Mm. Felt tends to harden up. It soaks up that glue. It soaks up whatever spit, water, dirt, grime. It doesn't really matter. It's going to soak it up and it's usually become very hard. Um, when you're gluing your ultra suede on, what I would tend to do is I would use glue, contact cement that maybe is a little bit thicker. Okay? I have, tend to have quite a bit of bottles sticking out on my bench, uh, and one that's maybe been sitting around for a while, the glue is maybe thickened up a little bit, um, that is the stuff I will use, because if it's too thin, if it's too thinned out, it tends to soak in to whatever material, and this goes for ultrasuade or felt or, or, or whatever, mm -hmm. it tends to soak in, and then it makes the material a little bit harder, so it kind of gets rid of that cushioning effect, that silencing effect. Um, the other thing you can do is if you have a thing, have a, a glue, the little stick, right up here by the top, a lot of times it's a little bit thicker, a little bit tackier. This is the stuff that I will use anytime I'm gluing my ultra suede. Okay. Okay. Or for you guys that are still using natural felt, use this tip too. Okay. okay? Don't, and whatever you do, do not use super glue on felt or ultra suede because it will soak through and it will cause it to become very, very hard. Mm. Now, Ryan, do you so. also, or do you ever laminate tech cork with another material. Glad you said something. That is kind of a thing that we do here in the Saks Pro Shop. You'll learn all about that if you sign up for our course, February 20th through 23rd, or March 6th through 9th. Okay, we'll go over materials and material concepts. Okay. But yes, uh, layering materials is a great way to get uh, the most out of uh, your materials to be very, very quiet. And you can see here, uh, what I've done is I've just kind of pre-glued some tech cork to some gray ultra suede. Oh, very cool. All right. Now, heads up, folks, you can't buy this, mm. but you can make it. Okay. People ask me, where can I get this? Where can I buy this? You can make it. You can buy the tech cork. You can buy the ultra suede. You put it just, and all it is is just this thin layer of, of contact cement. You let it dry. You stick it together. And now I've saved myself some time. And what I've done is I've taken probably the, the most smallest common sizes, you know, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, all the way up to 1.0 tech cork with the gray ultra suede oh, wow. on the back. Okay. okay. Very so, cool. So you can layer. In fact, that is what we do a lot in the Saks Pro Shop is layering materials to get the most out of their intended purposes, like the quieting effects of this, the stability effects of this. So Ron, the other question I have that we haven't gone over yet is about the one area of natural cork that we use uh, or in the, in the Pro Shop. Where can we still use natural cork? Where do you recommend it? Um, like I said in earlier, is we've Quit using natural cork on materials for saxophones except for one area, which is the neck cork. Okay, mm. so when you're putting your mouthpiece on, you want that little bit of squish. Okay, that's actually a good thing. Okay, we've tried in the past to use tech cork on neck corks and it just doesn't work. Yeah. Okay, it's not the best material. This is actually far superior in that one application to tech cork. So I still use it. You can see we still have big sheets of it that I will use my 1 16th for doing neck corks. Those of you that are doing clarinets also ah. probably use a very similar That's size right. and thickness uh, for your tenon corks. So yes, natural cork is still used. Uh, we still use it in other cases as well. Uh, but if you want to find out one other case, how we do it, sign up for our advanced sax course, <laughs> March 6th through 9th. I feel like a salesman. I feel like <laughs> I should have a t-shirt cannon and be able to shoot it at people <laughs> or something. Well, Ryan, thank you so much for that demonstration, telling us all about the synthetic materials we can use. Make sure you guys check out the website to see what courses are coming up. Also, make sure to put the Tech Cork hashtag in the comments below, whether you're watching it live or whether you're watching this later on in the week. That's going to give you a chance to win 15% off any of the courses that we have coming up. Thank you guys so much for your questions and for tuning in. Next week, we'll be back with our 10-inch shrinker, and we'll show you how to shrink a neck 
with that, we're going to have that tool on the website again next week. So thank you so much for watching and happy repairing.